Hello, this is Mark Van Gelder of Subvert Gov. Today I wanted to talk about, um, <clears throat> this is my first video I made in a couple of weeks, and the reason for that is that I, I made a move to uh, Asheville, North Carolina to be part of the Blue Ridge Liberty Project, and so I've sort of been in a, in a period of like staging and setup, and I think now I'm pretty much set up with what I need to do. Um, I'm starting up a new business. Um, I'm going to be uh, uh, making like pickled eggs, beef jerky, like sort of preserved goods, um, going to be going to be sort of uh, prepping, you know, in a sense of prepping and also like p making that a side business. So one way or the other, I think I, I think I'll be okay, even if the business is not successful. At least I've all I've done my job and and prepped. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm really excited about it. I got two employees now, um, uh, so they're going to be uh, um, working for a share of the profits. And so I've got my room set up now. I've uh, still got to work on the lighting because there's a little, a little, um, you know, whatever that is, a reflection that I got to get rid of. So I'll probably get a light to put in the back corner here, um, and then another, another, and then a lamp up here so I can actually illuminate my face. Because as of right now, it's like I get no light, you know, in front of me. So if I, if there's no light in front of me, like. It just doesn't look good. So I'm gonna get the lighting fixed and then I'll get, I'll get going. But uh, today I wanted to talk about the big issue in my view, what's going on. Uh, there's actually two big issues. The first is, uh, last night I was part of a conference call um, with a man named Eustace Conway. Eustace Conway operates a place called Turtle Island. Uh, it's like a, a nature, he basically like kind of hiked out into the middle of the woods back when he was 17 and just decided he wanted to live a simpler life. So he walked into the woods with nothing on his back, you know, and just, just uh, made, um, he just survived on his own. And he eventually like got into agriculture, you know, went from hunter gatherer into an agriculture sort of guy. And then, and now he like, um, hosts, he hosts, uh, invitations to people, uh, who get, uh, um, who get to come to his place and learn how to um, how to do these kinds of things. So, but anyway, the uh, the the local uh, county he lives in off of out of Boone, North Carolina, and the local county uh, has is threatening to shut him down because he doesn't have uh, like plumbing or electricity or I guess. Uh, uh, ceiling sprinklers, I guess he's got to have now. So he doesn't have those. And in order to uh, continue his operation, he has to com comply with code. But there's no, it's not like he like he lives in a neighborhood. He lives out in the middle of the woods. And there's like no wa running water or electricity anywhere nearby. I mean, he's basically living like a mountain man, you know. So long story short, um, he's been on, you know, multiple programs. And I'll put the links links up uh, down uh, in the comments but uh, <clears throat> it's just a real travesty what's happening to him <sighs> yeah they say that he has to comply with code or they're gonna I guess probably take away his property and you know he's like so naive he's like they've come and inspected my place before and now all of a sudden we'll have to comply with code and he suspects that there's actually a politician that's involved that it's actually a political witch hunt against him so, which wouldn't surprise me. What he's calling, put out a call for investigators and stuff like that. And um, there's a call flood going on today and tomorrow, all the way through, through the 29th of March. Um, I'll put the uh, the Facebook um, the Facebook link to the to the call, to the call flood so you know who to call. Uh, yeah, there's that. So it's, uh, I really recommend, you know, if, even if you guys aren't going to participate in it, share with all your friends, um, because all your friends, you know, need to know what's going on about Eustace Conway. And, uh, the media has been pretty much silent on it. I mean, I think it's a really big deal, but media has been pretty silent. So, you know, go figure. And Cyprus today is in the stage of a collapse. Man, that sounds good, but it doesn't sound so good because, because uh, you know, people haven't really prepared for banking collapses. And when Cyprus goes down, you're going to see the price of metals, I think, significantly go up. 
when it goes down. It's, they're not going to go up until it goes down, but it looks like it's in, it's in the stages right now of a, of a collapse. And it sounds like there's not really a whole lot Europe can do to stop it. So, so uh, the bank, and I guess, and you know, the the Cyprus has actually uh, banned or has, has limited ATM withdrawals per day to thirty euros per day, and um, so you can only take down take out the equivalent of about thirty dollars out of an ATM per day, you know. Uh, and that's instituted by the government. Uh, the rest of Europe, the European Parliament, is considering a a, a bill which would basically cause uh, anybody with with an account over a hundred thousand euros that's in a savings account uh, would cause them to uh, to lose a significant amount of that and just have it be forcibly withdrawn by the governments to pay for um, the debts. Of the European of the Eurozone. So oh god. I don't know. It's it's things are going very, very fast and very, very funny. Um I mean they're trying to prevent a bank run in Cyprus and it's not gonna work. I mean you've all you've had already this the Cypriot youth have uh, have risen up, you know, and they're and also bank workers too. I mean they're holding protests right now in the capital. It's it's crazy over in Cyprus right now and all because they want to preserve their currency, you know, like as if that's so amazing, you know, like, like, Oh, I've got to keep this, this one currency that I've had my entire life because that's the only one the government allows me to use. And so we give the government the control of the currency and it, they can basically run your life. I mean, they can tell you how to operate, you know, they can tell you how to conduct financial transactions. This is a perfect example of seeing what, what a government can do to regular everyday people. You know, because not everybody who has over $100,000 in the bank is like an exploitative, you know, like bankster, capitalist kind of guy. You know, it's like they're people with like family businesses, you know. They're people who are small business owners. I mean, anybody who saves over, you know, like three years of a paycheck, if they, they get paid, you know, well enough, anybody who saves over three years of a paycheck is, is considered to be... Um, like that guy, you know, it's just, it's craziness. So long story short, uh, don't fucking fall for it. So anyway, that's about it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, like I said, I got to get a lamp up here so it actually like illuminates my face and I got to get something done with that with that light so that it doesn't reflect off the back. But other than that, this is my pretty much my new permanent setup, um, at least for, you know, several months. At which point, you know, then somebody else can take this room. Or I might save it as a storage room, I don't know. Anyway, have a good one guys. I'll talk to you later.